Okay, it says you're live. Hi guys, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting live. Today is November 4th. How do I know that? Because it's my birthday. So for my birthday, the presents you can give me, subscribe down that way to my channel and like my video. How's that? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so today's my birthday. I am 40. 40. Did I just say that out loud? Mm -hmm. I'm 25. 40. Mm -hmm. 40. <laughs> anyway, so today um, I have decided to go live for my birthday because what do I want to do for my birthday? What do we want to do every day? We want to sew. We want to quilt. We want to make things because that's what we do. So that is what you guys are all here for. And I'm going to pass this over to Scott, and Scott's going to be the comment guy today, and he's going, actually, let's, before They're you start. They're all saying happy birthday, so let's say just, happy birthday. <laughs> let's just say hi to everyone here first before I do that. So we I'll got Barbara. Thank you, Kim. Hello, G uh, Gianna. Um, thank you. We got Brenda. Thank you. Mary Jane. Hello, and thank you. Uh, Lynetta. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here and joining and um, saying happy birthday. So everybody knew I told you guys it would just happen when it happens today. I didn't have a specific time scheduled because I don't schedule anything except for so Sunday. I don't schedule anything, so I just come on when I come on, and I figured it would be a nice treat for you guys to see me on my birthday. So here I am. Hi, Charla. Um, She's working on a t-shirt quilt. Working on a t-shirt quilt. How fun. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to pass the comments over to Scott, and he'll just say hi to new people that come in while I get to the point of today. You're still all saying happy birthday. So um, I am uh, piggybacking pretty much off of T Quilts. If you guys didn't know, T Quilts is another YouTube channel. Her name is T, and she comes on right now. She's doing um, a Cleopatra fan. She's using the AccuQuilt Go system, the large, one or the other. I don't know really any much about those, but I know it is a die cutting system. I do not have a die cutting system, and I also figured that it would be nice for you guys to know, especially for beginners, and th I'm going to tell you real quick, uh, quick note, I made this video already, how to do, but I lost this video on how to do this already. So, my goal is to teach beginners and people who have not used templates yet on how to use templates and cutting things out and sewing together. So we're going to be doing the Cleopatra fan, except we are doing it by cutting from templates. And I will tell you everything about my template set that I know, where I got it from, and so on and so forth, as well as show you what everything looks like and show you how to use it. And what I am using, I will show you my blocks, and then I will uh, show you how to sew it. So in advance, this camera will be moving today from one position to another to another. And so if you're motion sick, don't look at the screen when I'm moving the camera. That's all I got to say about that. So um, I'm going to take two seconds to lay my blocks out because I kind of stacked them out of the way because I was doing binding earlier. And um, Scott can just start saying hi to everybody that's joining and reading what everything says to me. Um, he'll just read the name and tell me what everyone says. And then I'm going to lay my blocks out and then I'll take the camera over and show you what I've done so far. And then I will show you how to do it. So I will walk you through it and tell you about my book and so on and so forth that I'm using. So he's just going to read. I am not in the screen for a second. Shirley Henneman's having a birthday today, too. Oh, happy says, birthday, You're her Shirley. birthday buddy, but she's awesome. not that young. <laughs> so I'm just going to lay my blocks out real quick so that you guys can see what I have been up to. And everybody's just saying happy birthday to you. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining me on my birthday and hanging out with me. I'm not going to lay these blocks in any specific order, only because... Um, I'm just making blocks, honestly. <laughs> I just guys, I want you guys to get the concept of what I'm doing here. All right, so. All right, that's nice and laid out, nice and laid out. I only have eight blocks done, but I do want you guys to see what I'm doing. They're awesome. All I right, think they're amazing. so, so you, you we're going to move the camera. If you don't like the camera moving, then just don't look. 
So this is where I'm at so far. I laid them out nicely so that you guys can see. Trying not to shake. Trying not to shake. You know how hard that is to not shake. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Suburban. So these are my blocks. Let me come close so that you can see. This is a Cleopatra fan block. And obviously I will not put the same colors next to each other when I make the quilt. Um, I just laid them out real quick so that you guys can see. So I'm going to carefully, carefully move to the other side so that you can see. I'm doing a five colors in my block so you can see one color, two color, then three color, and then four color, and then the black is my fifth color. So there is my blocks, and I am going to show you guys how to put those together. So for now, I'm going to put the camera back right there. Come over here and sit down and tell you what I am using to make these wonderful blocks. First of all, it took a while for this whole fabric thing to come together. This is not the, the, what I wanted. I wanted, when I, when I think about Cleopatra, the Queen of the Nile, I think lots of gold jewelry, for one, and I think about deep dark purple, dark blues, sea color greens, and so on and so forth. I think deep dark blues, purples, greens, oceany colors, the Queen of the Nile, you know what I mean? And um, I wanted to do purples and such like that, but I could not find anything, just couldn't find it. And I really wanted to start making it. So I had this fat quarter bundle that was gifted to me, and I figured, well, I'll just make it out of this because these are all of those colors except for the purple. One of the blues reads as purple, but it is really not purple. It's like a, um, a blue. So I really just wanted to get started. I have the black fabric. I might as well just do it. So this is a 20-piece fat quarter bundle that I'm cutting into. I can tell you right now, there is a lot of waste. I've made eight blocks, and this is my waste so far. Like... There's one thing about cutting these um, blocks from templates and probably from the AccuQuilt. There is lots of waste because everything has to sit and be cut a certain way. So, I am using this Cleopatra fan book that came with templates. It is Charlene Jorgensen. Um, she does have a video, it's like seven years ago, that was posted on how she does it. And she shows all the um, quilts that she made. Um, these make about... 10 and a quarter ish blocks, but I've been trimming them all down to 10 and squaring them up because there's plenty of room in I'll just bring it over here. There's plenty of room in my black to trim it So I just straighten up this edge and then go from this edge and trim over and I'll show you guys how I do that as well um, But yeah, there's plenty of room to trim down There's no points getting lost and everything is still lining up the way I am trimming it so sewing them together like this, I'm not going to lose any of my points when this block meets with the next. Um, so again, it is a. this can be found on Amazon, eBay. Uh, you could probably find it, um, I don't know, like used, uh, I don't know if it's used books, but I know it, you can get it at a used store. They came with templates, 10 templates, and they look like this. So I have to hold it up to here. So here's one of the templates. These templates are specific. They have a notch cut out at the top. Let me see, is that, you can tell? Can you tell? Yeah. So these templates, I'm going to hold it to the side right here. They have notches cut out in some places, and they're, it makes it easy to put them together. So there's also arrows and letters on them. So the letters are in coordination on where it sits, where it sits in this spot, as well as the arrows and the line that's on them is how you line it up to your fabric with the grain. So you guys all know fabric's grain runs this way and it runs this way. If you cut this way, that's on the bias and this way, it's on the bias. These templates are specifically designed to where when you're cutting it out on the grain and all your notches and stuff, when you get to the next template, this is how it needs to be cut this is going to be bias right here. So this allows you to, on the curve, which is a very, very slight curve, <coughs> excuse me, it allows 
um, you to cut along that curve, which will be on the bias, so it'll stretch and it'll fold over nicely when you go to press your seam. So I'm going to face the camera down so that you can see all the templates and the order that they are in. Give me two seconds. Put it down. We're just going to tip this screen down so that you can see. So here are the templates. There is 10 of them. And my paper behind this whole entire thing, I just drew them out so that I can lay my blocks on after I cut them out. So here they are. We have A and B, C, D, and E, and then we have F, G, H, I, and J. Now, I know this seems so weird. Why did it go like that? It should have been F, G, H, I, you know what I mean? It just didn't work out that way. So they cut them like this. They don't look like they will go together because they are just cut up. But once you take the seam allowance, this is one half of the block, and this is the triangle half. So when you're looking at the block right here, this is laid out right here to be this side of the block. So all those pieces go like that. And I'm keeping them in order like this by looking at my templates, even though I'm laying them on the paper so that I don't get this out of order. So you make one side, you make the other mirror image side. So that mirror image is this that way but you cut them out with them just one direction and I will show you how that is done as well. So we're gonna go ahead and just get down to the nitty gritty. I'm gonna move my blocks out of the way because I need the ironing board now. Okay. Want me to move stuff? And I'm Ready? gonna bring this over so that you can see on camera. So black is my background color. I cut a yard, but obviously you guys know I have a bolt of this because I always have a bolt of black or white or gray on hand. I just cut a yard out for now. This was a 20 piece fat quarter bundle set. So I'm just showing you all the beautiful colors. So this is the one that reads kind of purple, but it's actually blue, but it looks purple, which is good because I, I wanted that look of purple. So here's all the fat quarters, and they are folded in half at the moment. And the line, um, I forgot where I put that paper, but the line itself was uh, the coral, something at the coral. Oh, man. I said it in my video. Oh, here it is along the reef and when I looked up online this is by uh, Laura Birch um, by Clothworks when I looked up this line it is no lo longer available so this is something that is no longer available but at least you guys know the line maybe somebody has it in their stash and says oh this is beautiful I'm gonna use it so again it is along the reef um, Clothworks fight by Laura Birch I think I'm saying that right so there's my quarter bundle, and you can tell I've been cutting at them. I'm trying to save up as much as I can from all this fabric, so I'm, I'm cutting as needed per block. So I'm going to go ahead and move that out of the way, and move this. Oh, I don't need to move that. I need this. So I'm going to turn the camera just a slightly over, and we're going to show you how this works by starting black. We're going to go back to my book real quick. Put that over out of the way. Everyone's still saying happy birthday. Oh, thank you. All right, so and we're so just going to... So admires your creativity. Thanks and have a good day. Turn this down just a little bit more so you guys can see my whole entire workstation. Now, when you're working with templates, I can tell you right now you need a 28 millimeter blade. And if you see me cutting more than once, I'm actually out of 28 millimeters, so I can't change my blade out. And this one is quite dull. But I'm still using it anyway. It still cuts. It's just not, it's not a perfect cut. So with my yardage right here, I'm going to cut out a, for the pieces that I need for black. And I'm just going to show you guys what one block. It doesn't matter if you use a bigger blade or a little blade. Because this little blade goes around the curve uh, very nicely. The bigger blades, say you had a 60, 
See, now you're getting caught in the curve, and look, at it's straight right there. Okay. So if you use a 60, if you guys can see, there's a gap right there. You're not going to get around that curve accurately. And if I you use see. a 45, you're also going to have that same problem where you're going to have a gap as you're cutting around that curve. So you're going to get a lot of little uh, fabric... Um, uh, like shreds yes, off of it. I when you use a 28, it'll go along that curve wonderfully. So, but to cut everything else out, obviously, I'm using my 60 and or 45. But yeah, so I'm gonna cut for my G. I'm gonna show you guys right now. This is my G piece. I'm going to be cutting a strip of fabric so that I can put my G piece together. So we're going to, or cut it, I should say. I'm going to cut off a six and a quarter inch. I'm actually going to cut just a little bit more, like six and uh, four quarter, six and four eighths about off of here because it actually lays better for me that way. And since I'm only making one block for the camera purposes, I'm only um, cutting that and then for my Next two pieces, which would be E and B, I'm going to be cutting a four and a quarter inch strip, and I already have one cut, so that way it's done and out of the way, but I already had one left over. And I'm just cutting for the one block anyway right now to show you guys for the live stream. So purposely, you guys, when you're cutting strips, you wanna leave your fabric folded in half. So here's my fabric folded in half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my G piece because I need two pieces mirror image. So I need this version and I need that version. I want them at the same exact time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this piece up with my arrow on the grain. This is the grain and this is the grain. This sideways is stretchy. This is not stretchy and this is not stretchy this way. You're stretchy this way. So you want to make sure that your arrow, can you see the arrow on there, is on the grain. I'm flipping this piece so I can get the most of out of the way like this. Can you, can you see this really good? On here? No, yes. this is terrible. But up here. Hmm. I'm in view though, right? Yes, you're in view. All right, I'm going to line this up and I'm going to start because I'm trying not to waste too much fabric and I can cut left and right handed um, some of you cannot so if you have a rotating mat that will help you 100% so I'm going to go ahead and cut away around right here and if you have some kind of template tape that keeps it from sliding that's also a good thing so I'm going to go ahead and cut around this template. Now I'm coming to this curve. Just going to start at the front of the curve and go around and I'm going to take it off of the piece. Cut right here and then closer? cut around that curve just like that. No, fine, right where it is. So there we have two pieces mirror imaged. Okay. So there is my G piece. So I'm just going to set that aside on my little G pile. And I'm going to put this template back because now I have already cut it. And now if I can get it into place. Okay. The next one I want to cut, since I'm done with my G for now, is I want to cut an E piece. Because again, it's my outer piece. Coming back to the block again, we have G, E, and B. So we need those three pieces to be our outer, co our outer color. I'm going to come over here and look at where I can bring it on the grain with my arrow. And right now I'm actually wasting more than I should. Closer? Try and zoom in? No, it's fine. Okay. I have it lined up on the grain. I'm going to go ahead and just cut that away. Cut that away. Cut along this curve. And there's my dull blade coming into play. Cut down here at this bottom, and then come along this straight side, and then cut away my little marks. So if you cut those away, they should line up really nice and straight. Oops. Come on, on. did that one come off? Okay. And there, you guys just saw. Are you leaving? 
Oh. Want to say hi and bye to everyone? Oh. Okay. Bye. Bye. Right. Say Justin is leaving. Sorry, I had to okay. say bye. All right, so here is my E piece, mirror imaged. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that on my E over on my little sheet of paper that I have all my little letters on. Should I show them that? No, I already showed it. Oh. It was in the... I know, I just... Okay, so I'm going to put that I feel that like I need something to do. Goes. And now I'm going to grab my B piece. Again, I'm going to follow this arrow. I'm going to line this arrow up right here so that I have it on the straight of grain. Line it just a little bit straighter. I'm going to go ahead and cut this away on this side. Moving it completely out of the way. Cut my little indent. Cut that side. Hold the template down. Cut that side. Switch hands and I'm going to cut on this underside. If you have a really bad arthritis or your fingers hurt or anything like that, these templates are hard to hold, so make sure you put um, some kind of um, non-slip stuff on them. So here is now my B piece, mirror imaged. So I'm going to go ahead and put that where my B pieces are. And I'll place the template right back where it goes. Now if you look at the block, we're going to look at the block again because this is our example the whole time. We have this. On all of my blocks, my F piece, which is this, is a totally different color. So I'm going to pull out a green color, because there's only three choices, technically four, that I'm using for this green. And I'm going to pull out a piece to cut my F. That way my F is already done and out of the way. So we're going to go ahead and just going to start with this one right here. And here is my fabric. This is a fat quarter, okay, and it is, this is how a fat quarter normally would be. Oh. This actually looks like an alien head right here. It does. <laughs> you take and fold it to where the flat side is against the selvage, okay. That way you're getting the most of your fat quarter, but you're also getting your mirror image at the same exact time. I lined up this edge of the fat quarter with the selvage, and all I am doing is choosing a piece to make sure that I follow my line on my ruler, on my template, and find a place to cut where I'm cutting equally on both Hi. sides. So I'm going to choose this spot right here like this and then cut along my curve so here's a waist piece already there's a little bat for you see <laughs> come along this curve right here cut in this little indentation i'm going to switch hands to hold my piece everyone? nicely and they then all know who you are. cut along this side pull that away make sure everything is good and that little curved side is not perfect, so I'm going to just go over it one more time. Did John come down? No, he's up doing work. Oh. And there is my F piece now with a mirror image. So now I have both F pieces. Okay. That looks good. Look at that. So now we're going to move on. We're going to put F away. Now we're going to move on to this right here. So this is A. Right here is the same color as, hold on, I got to make sure one more time, C and I. So we're going to do, no, A, D, and H. That's right. A, D, and H. So I'm going to choose a contrasting, obviously everything is contrasting here. I'm going to choose A, D, and H real quick. So I'm going to choose a color from my pile here. Let's put a lighter one on that outer side. So here's the color I'm going to put on It is a lighter fabric. Oh, that's nice. I thought the girls might want to play with this. They will. What's in it? Nothing. Well, it All right. You need to wash. Scott's mom is here, guys. Her name is Marie, if you guys want to say hi. They've met her before. You can get yeah. on and say hi, Mom. Well, the camera's facing me. I down. know. She just wait. Just wait like that. 
<laughs> anyway, so now we're going to cut out A, D, Everybody and comes a. to say happy birthday. So I have my A piece, and I'm going to pull out my D yeah, piece, and I'm going to pull out my H piece. Yeah. That way they're the, already pulled out. In the cupboard, Here is my pile that. next to me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find no, the best soft. use of my that. fabric Will with all of these pieces. So, like right so here, A fits as long as my my um, direction line is on here with the arrows at a certain angle. We're going to get the best use of the fabric because I'm trying not to waste anything. So H fits perfectly right, or D fits perfectly right here. And... They're saying hello, Scott's mom. That's not going to work. That's <laughs> not going to work. I hi, turn Marie. things around just so that I make sure I can get all of these cut. So here we go. We're going to start here with D because D is I have to easy leave. to cut. Okay. We're doing stuff around the house trying to get it ready. Okay. Friday is inspection and Pat wants to take pictures and get our stuff put up. Okay. So I just want to get Tiffany her birthday card though. Okay. Thank you. Will you give her a hug or something if you Hold want? On. Thank you. Love you. Alright. Since it's my birthday, there's always lots of stuff going on. Alright. So, oh, there's a little piece that needs to be snipped. Alright, so I can pull that away. I'm going to check it one more time. Look, everything is all lined up. So D now has mirror image. So I'm going to move D out of the way. And I'm going to put D back in its spot. Right there. And now I'm going to cut out A, which is going to be cut right here. I really, really, really didn't want to waste that much. I wonder if I could put them like this instead. Ooh, it's better this way. There we go. I gotta let snip. Okay. I was standing there, I was looking through every card. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this away. Cut along this wonderful curve right here. Just take your time. Just like that. Cut my little notch out. Hold this nice and straight. Cut the opposite side. I'll tell him when I get home to call you. And then I'm gonna cut along this other curve right here. I don't know how to do that, Jim. Right here. What? Jim timed out quilting for the soul. He wants me to fix it, but I don't know how to do that. Where's quilting for the soul's name? Okay. I don't know how to do that. It doesn't, it won't, it, if she's just timed out, then that's okay. For 300 seconds. Yeah, it's it'll be over long. soon. Sorry yeah. about that. I don't know how to Sometimes do that. Sometimes it accidentally happens during scrolling. All right, so since I pulled that away and it was off, I gotta fix it real quick so it lays nice. I'm going to take and snip that little corner right there. So let me check it one more time to make sure that my H piece is lined up correctly. And it is, so it's good. Here is my H piece now with mirror image pieces. I'm going to go stick that on my pile. And now throw that in the scrap. I'm also going to just cut this off because I can't use that. We are put H away. And now I'm going to cut out my A, so I'm going to line it up. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut this corner out right here, cut this down here, cut that notch, turn the whole thing, and cut this side right here. I should be able to pull it away, but like, my, like I said, my blade is kind of on the dull side. And then cut my little notch at the top. And if you have a rotating mat, it probably makes this process so much easier. But here is now my A piece, mirror imaged. So A is now done. I put A back in my order right here. The reason for that is so I can keep track of the pieces that I have done and haven't done yet. He, he deleted her. How do we undelete someone? Deleted her comments? I don't know how to undelete a comment. He supposedly deleted her for good? or? No, he didn't delete her for good. Because it would have showed it right here. Unhide. Unhide. Okay, there we go. All right, you should be able to be there, uh, Sarah. All right, so now these were the ones that cut A, D, Sarah, and let H. us know if we're back. 
with your back, because I have no idea how to use this stuff. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to cut out these ones right here, these two. So this is C and I. So C and I, I need a contrasting color for. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a contrasting color. And I'm just kind of grabbing and going, honestly, because they all kind of nicely go together. Don't worry, Sarah. We figure it out. Things happen. It's um, okay, Jim. Everything's okay. I'm not good with technology. Part. It happens to the best of us. So here we go. Here is what I'm going to use for those two pieces. So we're doing I, or yeah, I and C. So I'm going to pull I and C out. And I'm going to get the best of what I can right here. C has a lot of um, waste no matter which way you cut it because of the way it is shaped. So if I can get as much as I can right here. So I'm going to cut from like this. So, Look at that, Tiffy. Your husband is proud. You're saving fabric left and right. You're doing better than I would be. So I'm going to cut this out. That's good. Cut along here, right up to there. Move that out of the way for a moment so I can cut that. Go ahead and cut this little piece down here. Come along this edge. And notice I'm still using my right hand, except I'm just using it at an angle, a different way, cutting away from me. Lined up, lined up. Yes, sir, you're back. Everything's good. It's okay, Jim. Everything's good. Don't worry. My blade is so dull. All right, here we go. Now along this little slight curve right there. And there we go. So now I have C with its mirror image. Do you want me to go and try and quick sharpen? I don't blade. think it would either, but it was worth All a right. shot. Your fans might get a kick out of I'm it. I'm going to go put C. Scott using a knife sharpener on a rotary back. blade. Huh? Come on they, they now. They do make rotary sharpeners. All right, and I'm going to align this one up again so that I don't waste as much fabric because, again, I'm using fat quarter bundle, but the pattern shows what to cut in the book um, size-wise for using yardage for each cons you know each piece that you're cutting. The, the book has um, all the info, and I'm pretty sure any pattern that you get is going to have all that info as well. So if you get a pattern or a template set, or uh, the AccuQuilt probably shows how it's done as well. How to fold your pieces and put it on the machine. See, there we go, not cutting very well. Got that corner, got that corner. Right there, come on, there we go. Everything is cut out, so now here is my eye piece, mirror imaged. And last but not least is J. So let's bring this back up here so you can see. J is this last bottom one. So again, I want another contrasting color. So I'm going to throw that out of the way and grab a really dark color right here. So we're going to use this. And I'm just grabbing, making sure that all three of the colors that are in here, or four, all contrast each other nicely. And against my black, I'm trying to make sure it's the lighter colors against the black or else it'll wash out the darker the color is against the black. And we don't want that to wash out like Eric says, this on one. your birthday, life can't get any better Like than this that. one, oh, I mean, you. from far away, can you tell it kind of washes out? Yeah, I can't get any better. I'm doing this on my birthday. <laughs> it's fun. Those colors are beautiful that you're pulling out. You do good colors. Look at that. All right, so now we're going to cut that last piece, which is J, and right away, I'm like, which way should I cut it? And I want my arrow on the grain, so I'm going to cut right here, so that way I get the most of my fabric, because again, I'm trying to get as many blocks as I can from this um, fat quarter bundle. Oh, it slipped just a little. And make sure that your blade is always facing the side of the template. So if I'm on this side of the template, the blade needs to face it. If not, you're not going to be able to get along it, and this notch, the blade is not big enough to fit beyond it. That's another thing for beginners and newbies using stuff like this. Make sure that your, your template, your blade is facing the template. That way you get a accurate cut. All right, slide this back up where it goes. There we go. And cut. 
this curve. Cut that. Cut that away. I gotta fix this side down here because I slid just ever so slightly. There we go. So now I have my J piece mirror imaged. So now all we have to do is, like I said in the beginning of this video, you're going to get moved around. Now we have to sew this. So I'm going to take my templates and move these out of the way. And we're going to take you over to the sewing machine. Do you want to move it? I'll Did do you it. I'll do okay. it. You don't like me touching it, huh? <laughs> I'm going to take you guys over to the sewing machine. And I'm going to close you up to the camera so you can see. I am sewing this with no pins. I am not using pins on either any of this at all whatsoever because there is no need um, but first what I'm going to do before I start sewing is I am going to pull out my little ironing board and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a block out on the ironing board like this so we're going to take J and put it down like this and then we're going to take I Put it here, and that's D. That's I. No, that's not I. That's C. That's why it looks stupid. J. Haha. There you go. J. And then I. Like this. And then H. And I think I'm backwards, actually. Eric says, no pins. You're brave. I would be pinning like a porcupine. Yeah, I don't need no pins. H and then F goes like this and G comes like oops the straight edge on this side. Oh see I knew I was laying it out wrong. Okay now I think you're back. Okay. Says you're alive. Oops, that goes on this side. I have to re. Oops, that goes on this side. Yes, we lost you guys for a minute. We should be back though. Does everybody see us? Our internet is not very good. This is why I did this whole laying out thing. <sighs> I'm upside down, which is making it hard. <clears throat> a. B. Ah, there we go. A and B. A and B. I'm just messing myself up is why. E. Hold on. I'll look at this thing. Make sure you follow the direction of everything. There we go. E. C. B. There we go. And then... These go like this, like that, like that, and like this. No, hold on. I'm going to have to mess those ones up. I messed those up, I think. G, with the thing facing down, it goes like this. This one goes on this side. Aha, that's what I did wrong. This one goes on this side. That one goes on this side. So you really have to pay attention to this. <laughs> right here's the book for help, honey. Okay, this goes on this side. No, don't. Goes on this side. Goes on this side. And then this goes on this side. This goes on this side. And this goes on this side. I am looking at the book. There we go. Like that, like that. H faces in like this, like this. I like this. Like that. And then this goes on this side and that goes on that side. There we go. Making sure, making sure before I start sewing, everything is in the correct position. Yep, yep, yep. Those will lay down. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. There we go. Now it's correct. That's big for one block. Trust me. 
it sews together nicely. Okay, okay. so now I'm going to come over to the sewing machine. I have faith in you. That is the block laid out. It's kind of confusing. That is why I pay attention to the picture where the letters are and I put my block in the position. See that? I lay those pieces in the position you see on here. So I pay attention to that the whole time. So now we're going to come over to the sewing machine and I'm going to show you guys how to do this. <laughs> Jeez, I hope... I'm so confused. It's pretty when they get them sewed. I hope that I can zoom in good enough for you guys and Scott will pay attention. I want you guys to see how easy these sew. Well, yeah, if they want, I can move the camera in closer, but you got it pretty close. Yep. So you guys can see nicely. Sorry for the movement. No frogs sewing for Tiffany. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's hope I don't hit anything or bump anything. I'm going to start with A and B. So here's A and B block. As you can tell, we cut out the notches. Those notches are there for a reason. This is so simple. And if you have one of these quarter inch foot, so see how it has this little guide on this one side and it lifts and it's a quarter inch foot on this side from this side of it, that helps. So I'm going to take A and I'm going to put it on top of B like this sideways. So see, it looks so weird, but if you line that notch up, right here on this side nicely and you stick that under the machine take a couple stitches to where that needle is down and then you take and line up the notch on B right here to the side of A just like this and hold it just like that oops I was stitching earlier I gotta stitch it one more time because I was stitching with a very tiny stitch length I mean a really big stitch length, sorry. Can't even talk. Alright, so now I just finger press that down, just like this, and now A and B are connected. So I'm going to move A and B out of the way, and now I'm going to grab C and D. Kim does also what? pin the scrap block pieces. So here's C and D. I'm going to do that same thing. There's a notch at the top of C and there's a notch at the bottom of D. So I'm going to again line that notch right sides together like this. Put them under the machine. Keep that needle down. Pull that notch straight and line it up with the side right here with my fingers. So there we go. Lining the notches up pulling that fabric, it's on the bias, it stretches, and they're both lined up. You can see both those fabrics there. So it, done. Then, press I'm it. That's how you remember it all, honey. I'd be Just like that. Left and right. Okay, upside down now and I'm going to grab E and take it to the top. Again, the top of D has a notch and the bottom of E has a notch. So what do we do again? Same exact thing. We hook them together with the notches. So we're going to put this notch right here. We're going to line it up so it sits funny. It looks like this. Put it under the machine. Take a couple stitches. Leave that needle down. Pull this over to where that's straight and pull this over lining those two notches up just like that. I put my finger on it and you can see they're both lined up. That's why that bottom is black. You can see nice and lined up. I'm going to finger press that down. So there is C, D, and E connected. Look how simple that is. They're such slight curves, but in the end they look pretty big that they go so together so easily. So now we're going to grab J and I, and I'm going to put J and I together. Same thing. The, the top of J has a notch and the bottom of I has a notch. Right sides together. Line that notch up right here on this long side so you can see it looks like it's curving the opposite way of each other. Put that curve under here. Turn this piece, lining that end and this end right here. Straighten them both out to where they're on top of each other. Slide them through. 
press, and voila, it's together. This is the, this is so simple. I I don't know. For me, it is. For other people, it might not be. So now we're going to grab H, and it's the correct orientation. Again, the top of I has a notch to line up with the side of H, and the bottom of H has a notch to line up with the side. So again, right sides together. Lay it on here just like this. Start sewing. Keep my needle down. I'm going to align that bottom right here on this edge. Straighten it out underneath. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Sometimes, if it doesn't work that way, I just Be straighten it and sew like this because it's being picky on me. Just like that. And then press it, and it's on there. The nice straight line. So I'm going to put that aside. This was J, I, and H. Now, separately, I connect F and G. So F and G get connected separately. So F or G has a notch, and F has a notch up here at the top. I'm going to flip these around to where I can line this up first and see that notch. And then turn it upside down. Eric says, so it's all about the notch. It's all about that notch, yes. Upside down, so this one. So it's on here. I'm just going to walk it through until this notch right there ends up on that side. Needed it just a little further. So without any pins, it went on just like that. And this one gets pressed downward like that. So now F and G are together. Now we have to attach the J, I, and H unit to the F and G unit. F and G. F and G, man. <laughs> anyway, again, those notches are there for a reason. So we have a notch up here and a straight side right here on G. Always good to have fun while you're quilting. And an H has a notch. So we're going to line up that notch on that H and that G. We're going to put them together, slide it under the machine, and this is the only one I don't line up completely both ends because this one I just walk, you can see right here, it's under the needle. One goes way this way and one goes way that way. But if you just hold this piece, grab a little bit right here and a little bit right here, walk them through, walk them through, walk it through, line it up, walk it through, line it up, all the way down. Just keep going until this notch lines up right here with that side, just like that. And that is how that goes on. So just like that, oops, come on. I want that seam to press outwards like this. Got to finger press it at first because I'm not ironing at the moment. And actually, Scott, can you plug that iron in down under there, please? Uh, on the shelf, underneath that shelf, there's a plug underneath the shelf. I gotcha. All right, so now I have all those together. So now the only thing left to do is take A and B, C, D, and E, and J, I, H, F, and G, and hook them together. Again, notches, guys, notches. If you put these right sides together, there's a notch up here. That notch lines up with the, not the flat side right here. So again, we're just going to put it together. This bottom notch lines up with this right here at this bottom piece, and then just together, sew on down, open it up, and look at that. Quilting for the soul is going to tell her daughter that she wants this. So like here is a nice curve right there. Now again, those notches, man, those notches. There is a notch up here on the top of uh, the E piece. That is going to line up with G on the top flat side. So we'll put that right side together, line that darn notch up. <laughs> and then I'm just going to see these two down here, that bottom of J and the bottom of C. They hook together like this, nice and straight. Line the two up. And I haven't pressed anything, just with my fingers only so far. So down side, of course i got to let that go. Line this up, sew down notches this side. Yep. Yes, this this is a, all about the notches. And 
most of the templates, as far as I know from looking online, most of the templates have notches as well. So this didn't line up perfectly right here. It's off ever so slightly, just ever so slightly. But guess what? I don't care because I'm having fun with this. So, And I don't feel like picking this out just to realign those up a stitch. I'm going to leave it the way it is because I don't care. So there is half of the unit already. Now to build the other half. It looked good to me. I didn't see what you were talking about. I'm going to start with A and B again. So here's A and B. Same thing. Line the notch up with the side, except we're doing it opposite now because we're backwards. We're doing the mirror image. So now I'm just going to line that notch up. Fold this down. So there's A and B together. We're going to grab C and D. Again, I'm upside down because I'm on the opposite side now, so everything's backwards. So now instead of lining up the notch, this time I'm lining up my straight edge with the notch from the underside. Then I'm going to twist that piece a little, put that right there with my finger. Again, press that seam down and out of the way with my finger. We're going to go ahead and grab E. So again, just going to put these two pieces on here like this, lining it up. I hope I'm helping you guys with this. It goes together so easily. Um, I was surprised. I thought it was going to well, be harder just too. Asked if anyone else is working on the Cleopatra. I'm doing it. I know T obviously is doing it. And there's quite a few people that are. How many of you that are here right now are doing it? So that is now together. Now, before you even attach the other ones, you could always start by putting these units together so you don't get them out of order. So I would just put the notch up here instead. So I'm covering it this time because I'm on the opposite side. Put the needle down, line the bottom notch with the bottom straight edge like this. Can line see everything up. I'm just holding that end with my finger. So to get keep them from getting lost and out of the out of order, you can just put them together now at this point. And see, some of these are lining up and some of them are not because I'm not really caring and I'm not really paying attention, honestly. But you can pay attention to your points. They shouldn't be hard to line up. Some of them are on my blocks and some of them are not. So now we have J and I. Again, just going to line up this side like this so we create this weird funky thing. Then I'm going to hook this notch up with this flat side just like this. And I'm just using my fingers for everything. Once you pull it straight, it lines both those fabrics up nicely. I'm just so slow if you need. So I'm going to finger press it down. Eric says, I'm learning. It's all about lining up the notch. Grab that next one. Again, I'm just going to stick this on top. Actually, this is going to be the one I sew from upside down. That's right. I'm going to line interesting. this up, turn it upside down. And yes, I'm using black thread on this project, only because I have black in here. So on some of the lights, maybe it'll poke through, maybe it won't. All right, so now we have H on top of I, just like that. And this one does have a little uh, like tip on it that comes out. Uh, there is no control over that. Now we're gonna hook F. Queen says yes, it is, and Tiff is making it look so easy. F and G, <laughs> F and G. I just want to say that every time I say F and G. You're making it look so easy. Tiff. Again, pull that notch over. I don't mean to make it look easy because guess what guys, it is easy. It's as easy as it looks. Hold those notches. It will automatically line up because that's on the bias. And it automatically pulls that block through or that piece, you know, to make a block. So Some those are together now. <laughs> Thank you for all those coming in and celebrating my birthday with some sewing. All right, so now I'm gonna turn these upside down like this. Hook this on here, flip it, lining, keeping that notch lined up. Oops, stay right there. Thank you. Come in a couple stitches, and this one I'm going to walk. OK, 
Kim says when she first saw the block, she thought, oh, heck no. But after seeing you do it, she thinks maybe she can. Just I'm telling you guys, to hold this, <laughs> just hold the pieces and walk with them and see this lines up right here. Can you see how that lines up? I just need to keep this curve right there. That's why I'm walking it so that it stays. And by the time I get to that piece, it'll be nice and straight right there. And then this one presses away so if you want to snip it you can I have not snipped anything I haven't even pressed anything yet to me it doesn't need it and Scott didn't turn the iron on because I he plugged it know. in he plugged it in though all right so now anything else this unit of the J I and H F and E are together and now we already had put the A and B together with the C D and E Again, it's all about that notch here and this notch down here, right sides together. Align this darn little notch. Take a couple stitches and since I finger pressed, I'm just holding that seam to go under. And again, if you want to worry about where this is going to align, then line these two. Can you see that? Line these two seams up and then fold it. Stay within that quarter inch. So watch. Let's see if I can get it good. And then we'll come down to this next one. Keeping my notches together though. We want to keep those notches together. I'm going to fold this over and look for my quarter inch is going to be right there. Let's open it up. I don't see. No, it didn't on that one, but it did on that one see they just never so you can see that those two come together nicely but these ones do not again I can care less Lisa says, now I've got that song stuck in my head thanks Tiff and Eric what song oh it's something with F and G I guess. oh all right so now I'm gonna press these two units as you can tell they look kind of horrible let me throw these through the iron real quick you guys can just my dirty dusty juki I can move the camera if you want. No. It's fine right where it is because I still have one more seam to sew. Okay. And now here's my two half units, nice and pressed. Look at what a pressing makes. It just it makes quite the difference, but everything is still laying super flat. Now I'm just gonna stick the those two right two sides together and so exactly like you would making a half square triangle. So I'm going to start out up here, take a couple stitches. I'm going to peek under here to make sure that the top of my F's line up and they do. I'm going to stop with the needle past that just a little. I'm also going to come down here and make sure that these seams, can you see these seams coming together, match right here. Everything is lined up. I'm going to hold these seams down so that they stay because they're all coming together. And then I'm going to go ahead and ma match this seam right here with that seam right there. Just like this. And then line up the ends of my half square triangle. And when I open it up, there's a block. So now I'm just going to go this real quick. And then I'll move the camera so that you can see how I trim it. So I'll be in the camera in just a second, I'm just steam pressing this real quick. Do you want me to do some iron for you? No, it's fine. Okay. Elvin's offering, you never let me. I'm going to add some starch on this real quick before I cut, which I'm pretty much out of. I've been starching all of my blocks, friends, because I want them to stay flat <laughs> since I'm moving them around so much. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Goodman says, Tiffany, you're a Scorpio? Yes, I am Question a Scorpio. Mark? They didn't realize. All right, here we go. We're going for a ride. Boom. <laughs> We're going to unzoom. Oops, that's the wrong way. Aha. So here is my block. Just like that. And I want to take this down to 10 inches. And I'm going to tell you right now, before I cut it, 
I'll show you that it's a very awkward, funky size. Should we hold it up to the camera and show them? Okay, so I'm going to lay this on here just to tell you guys what size this block is, and you can see for yourself. If we lay it edge to edge, because it's not very straight, it's ten and a quarter on this side, and ten and eighth to ten and a quarter on this side. They, these, every single one I've pieced together, and I've tried some of them where I've on some of these, I went ahead and made sure that all these matched. I made sure that this laid that way. This, No matter which way I put it together, they always come out. Every single one of them have been coming out 10 and a quarter-ish by 10 and an eighth-ish. I don't know why, but that's just the way they come out. That looks so cool. Hold on two seconds. You are talented, my love. You hear me? Thank you, thank you. So what I'm going to do to make this 10 inches equal is I'm going to lay my ruler and I'm going to start by straightening out this side. So I want the cutting on this two sides. I'm going to line my 45 degree angle up to where it comes out right here at this tip and lines up with this tip right here. And I'm literally going to be shaving the edge right here and right there. We're going to pull this away before moving the ruler. So now I have a nice straight edge. I'm going to turn the whole thing and now I'm going to be cutting off the black. So I'm just going to line up my 10 inch here and my 10 inch down there. I'm going to hold it right there. Oops, I'm on a template. That's why You're I was saying it's tipping. It's awesome. It's pretty. We're going to line up the 10 inch. We're going to line up that 45 degree angle. Line up that 10 inch. Everything's lined up. My 45 is touching corner to corner. And you can see, look how much is hanging out. Some of it's hanging out more than the rest. Do not know why this block does this. I mean, it doesn't matter because there, there was plenty of room to snip it away. Lisa says, wow. So there we have it. And this is what I snipped away. Sarah's a beautiful block. So now oh, we have loving it. another block. That is so awesome. And then because I'm moving mine around so much, I'm actually stitching them an eighth, an eighth of an inch all the way around all my blocks because I'm moving them and I don't want any of this, all these seams. I don't want nothing to even hardly try to come apart. I want it to stay nice. So I'll bring, up, lovely. I'll bring up all the other blocks so that you can see them. Now we'll just move that because I need to sew that. Jim says, so I'm going to hold them all here so that you can see one at a time. For those that are just joining, here, we'll just lay four out. There's lots of ways this can be laid out. There's plenty, plenty of ways that the Cleopatra fan can be laid out. So here's one way that it can be laid out. And then if you laid it this way and you keep continuously doing this with all the blocks when they come together you will get this right here which looks like an iron cross right there and I'm pointing that out purposely because some people have those on necklaces i've noticed a lot of dudes in my life have had an iron cross necklace yeah. i don't know why but maybe it was just a common thing that they sold for a while and then they can also be put together on point so from you guys, you are seeing the on point version. And then when you put them together on point, as your sides come together, you would put, you would make half blocks like this to continue your thing. So you would have a half block to be your edge. You would have a half block to be your edge like this. And then you would continue with full blocks all the way around. So this would be the on point version. You can make them all come together in different manners and orders, so you can see that. Is there another version you're going to use yet? I'm actually going to be doing the all four together thing. So I'm going to have four of them come together like this. Yeah, show us quick. This is the, what I'm doing. I'm going to be doing this. I already decided on it because I like it. This is what I'm going to do. Continuously make four patches of these. So now I have technically two four patches worth because I have eight blocks. I like it like this. And that's why I put the green because the green makes it look like a leaf right here. Like this is the flower and then these are the leaves. I like that. I, that was part of my design choice when I realized mm -hmm. I only had three greens to work with. So that is what I'm doing. 
and one of them is not truly green but I did add it just to see and it's this color right here so this is the one that's not fully green but when it's blended in at least I can get a couple cuts because I'll run out of these because I'm using fat quarters so I'm getting what I can with what I can but I'm gonna stick with the greener prints on the outer side Lisa Pegg says oh my gosh it's spectacular Jim likes the on point Linda loves the four patch. So this is what I'm doing, guys. So I'm going to turn the Colleen camera up to happy birthday and face me gorgeous. now. I'm going to come back up. So now you guys can see where you were behind me. You were on a tripod that's not fully standing up. I have it, like, just sitting there, sort leaning of, the wall. <laughs> leaning against the wall so that you can see me <laughs> when I'm sewing. And then you guys are on a box right now that I cannot get to stand back up for the life of me. Come on. There we go. So yeah, there is what I'm doing and I hope I simplified the, the putting this together. So if you have templates, if you put some anti-slid um, tape like a uh, medical taper, they have this anti-slip tape where you can take a hot glue gun and put little tiny itty bitty dots on it to stop it from sliding. As long as you have your fabric folded in half and you cut both pieces at the same time you'd be cutting your mirror images so you would only need the glue on one side of the template which would be the the right side up that you would be reading which will keep it from sliding and you can turn it and cut and turn and cut with the hot glue gun um, as long as you do that and make sure that you keep your first block which is what I did my very first block that I did as a practice with scraps I kept this next to me to know that I wanted contrasting in certain spots you know and then I went with the black around the edge so I kept that next to me when I just started and started and now that I see the block over and over and over it's a lot easier to put together than the first two were and then the lining it up and so on and so forth trying to get the points to match some of them, like I said, are perfect points. Some of them are not. And you know what? You can't see it. It's from far away. Like, could you even tell? No, you can't. So, I don't think it matters. They look awesome. I like them because I like the look of this. I bought this template um, almost four years ago because I had saw this on a quilt. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want that. What is the name of it? I looked up the name, found it, found the template set on um, Amazon, bought it. Bam, now look at me. After four years, it's been sitting in a box. I'm finally putting it together because T inspired me to finally do this. So. Thank you, T. So thank you, T, if you watch this video for reminding me that I did buy this and I wanted to make it and I thought it was hard four years ago. And now I'm like, that's not hard at all. Simply putting these together. So Don't worry. Great, Kathleen, you can watch it later. I've been making four a day, so four blocks a day. So today I got one I probably won't finish, but tomorrow I'll probably finish the other three. Do you as long as I can get enough done. Do you have an idea how many blocks you'll get from the FQs? <coughs> oh, from the fat quarters? Yeah. Um, I'm thinking, by the way, I'm trying to get as much as I can out of it. I'm thinking about 30 blocks. I'll probably get about 30. Um, so that would be a pretty hopefully big Hopefully more, quilt. but be about 30. That would be a pretty decent sized quilt. Yeah, with stashing or anything between the blocks and changing things up I'm just going to leave them block to block and then do a first black border and then find a really pretty um, dark print to tie it all together maybe a green and go all the way around it with a second border and that's all I'm doing I'm not doing anything extra fancy I don't even think I'm going to quilt it fancy I think I'm going to quilt it basic because <coughs> those things I know in advance too so <clears throat> anyways just remember the template set that I bought, you can find it on eBay, Amazon, blah, blah, blah. Charlene Jorgensen. It's the rotary cutting templates, easy to use. Cleopatra's fan. That is what I'm using. If you have an AccuQuilt, go find out from T. It's the Cleopatra's fan block. She'll be able to tell you. She'll, pro she'll be on tonight, um, this evening. You can ask her then where she got her template. I know everywhere sells AccuQuilt products. I don't know. She got hers on AccuQuilt website, I think. Um... She's, she'll be able to tell you whether it was, it's pretty simple too, um, what size her blocks were. These come out about 10, but I'm trimming them to 10. So mine are different size than what a lot of people are doing. Um, that's it. I don't have anything else. You still get more happy birthdays. Thank you. Thank you guys all for joining me on my birthday. It's pretty awesome. I am now 40 years old for those that didn't know and is just joining. I mean, <coughs> 25 years old. <sighs> 
I, I gotta get used to it. I mean, um, <laughs> I'm going out to dinner tonight for my birthday with Scott. I chose Red Robin. Why? Because I want a Royal Red Robin, which is a burger with bacon, cheese, and an egg on it. Yum. <laughs> Plus you get a free meal. For and I get a free meal for my birthday every year. So, um, let's see what else. That's it. That's all I have. Um, this was the Cleopatra fan for those that are wondering, and I'm having fun with it. This is this is probably one of the funnest ones I've made because I'm liking how the colors are going together. Like I love it. I think it's I'm amazing. liking how it. I want to keep it for myself, but I already most likely have a buyer. <laughs> so, uh, really, yeah. somebody already wants. It? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> when they found out I had seven hours invested, though, in just the eight blocks, they were like, "Oh, really? That takes that long?" Yeah, <laughs> this is this is a time-consuming project. So, if you guys are going to take on and you only want to make a table runner, just know that all eight of these blocks has taken me seven hours. Plus another hour right now. Obviously, it would be less if I wasn't talking and showing you guys. So, it's it's about 45 minutes. I could do, if I had all the pieces cut like I did yesterday in advance, and I had them laying on these pieces of paper in their corresponding spots, I actually had them done in 30 minutes because I had it all pre-cut. The sewing only took like 30 minutes. So, it goes pretty quick when you make more and more. But it's fun. It's very fun. I'm liking it. I'm having fun with it. So, and I'm really glad I bought this a long time ago, and I'm really glad that I found it <laughs> in a box. So, anything else? Anybody have any comments, questions about this? If you so far, are watching just saying, enjoy the your replay, and just comment underneath day. the video. And other than that, I'm going to relax for a little while and then go out to eat and pig out because, <laughs> yeah. On an update about that, ready, guys? I'm gaining my weight back. I am 118. I was 114, and now I'm 118. All this food I'm eating, all these candies. She's Halloween, still a skinny mini. Halloween pushed me over that limit. So I'm more. gaining my weight back, which is good. It makes <laughs> me glad. I don't. I don't feel like a skeleton at the very moment. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that's all I have. I'm glad you guys hung out with me for my birthday. Thank you for all the birthday wishes, and I will see you guys Sunday, most likely, at 5, Arizona time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a good night. Is it off? Or is it just spinning? No, I was reading comments. Oh. Hold on.